Hello, this video is for Digital Society IB students who are about to do their exams and it's a, basically a guide about how to prepare for your exams so you can get the maximum marks you possibly can. This video will focus on concepts which when it comes to the three C's I believe this one's the most important so if you're short of time this is the one you should really focus studying on. The main reason for this opinion is that for the 8 mark and the 12 mark question, they often ask you, ask the candidates to make reference to concepts. So sometimes they provide the concepts or a concept that you need to talk about in your, in your response to the exam question, or sometimes they say you choose it. So you need a good understanding of concepts if you want to get maximum marks for those uh, 8 and 12 mark questions. Anyway, uh, here we go. I'm in, my, in this website here, IB Digital Society, if you're in the home page, it lists all the latest blog posts. So this is one I created yesterday, 21 hours ago. Uh, it's called IBDP Digital Society Exam Prep Concepts. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so you need to, uh, the first thing is have access to the seven different concepts. So change, expression, identity, power, space, systems, and values and ethics. Now, first and foremost, you need to have a good understanding of each of these seven, but you also need to be able to remember these seven as well. So if I was preparing for the exam, I'd be creating some kind of like uh, posters or some mind maps or some visuals, because I'm more of a visual learner, so that I can, when I'm sitting in the exam room, I can think and remember these visuals that I've actually created. Um, now, why study concepts? Well, as I already mentioned, it's important for your examination success but it's there also you need to also refer to concepts when you're doing your IA in criterion A you need to write a section about how your research question and your research topic is clearly connected to one of the concepts so very important to understand the concepts so in, in order of preference I'd say concepts is number one in your exam preparation number two would be context and number three would be the content that's how I would prioritize them for exam preparation. Okay, now one of the main things about uh, digital society, in fact, all group three subjects, there's supposed to be a shift from student directed learning to student and teacher co learning to student led learning. So if you're at the end of your IB journey and you've everything's going to plan, you should be able to self-study pretty easily. Um, so this is the focus of this. This is basically how to study, a guide for you to study so you're prepared for the exams. Okay, I've got five steps. The first one is have an understanding of each of the concepts. Um, so as per the guidebook, now in this website here, I've got them here, concepts. So step one would basically be looking through. So 2.1 has changed. There's seven different concepts. So the first one is change. So recall from your class activities, like how is change actually addressed? Then you can start reading what's uh, here. This is passage from the IB uh, guidebook, the Digital Society guidebook. So start reading through changes evolution. What is evolution? Do I understand evolution? Do I understand what transformation is? So this is you reading through them. And if there's anything you don't understand, do some research. So check your prior, uh, prior knowledge, do some research, and then if there's a mismatch, you fill in the blanks. So you come to the a better and a deeper understanding. Now there's two parts here. There's the areas to study, A, B, C, and D, but then there's also some theories and frameworks. So we're gonna start with just the first section, change A, B, C, and D. Now we'll just go back to the blog post. So first of all, I've said here, grasp every each of the seven concepts then once you've got a grasp of them you need to should create your own working definition now I've got an example of this so I created it here now I created this uh, working definition with the help of artificial intelligence and a little bit of research and a little bit of the digital society textbook as well so this is from the guidebook. Now this is what I've created. So first of all, I've pulled everything apart. So first of all, what is evolution? So I go into detail here about what the evolu what is evolution in relation to change? What is transformation in relation to change? 
So me coming up with these own de definitions, creating these own de definitions, they should get implanted in my brain so I'm ready for the exam. If the word change is mentioned and I have to write about change, I know I can, f I can talk about evolution, transformation, adaptation, these type of things. Um, so I did the same with the next one, 2.1b, the nature and importance of change. Now, by just reading, change involves examining people's, it doesn't really say much to me. Um, so therefore, you have to do it a little bit of research. So I, I, uh, the simplest way I did it was, if I just copy and paste this, stick it in your favorite AI tool, I'm gonna to use Gemini. And basically, hang on, where's the prompt down here? Please explain what this means in relation to IBDP Digital Society. I'll put it in there. I'm just going to see what Gemini tells me about this because I don't really understand that. Okay, so whatever your favorite AI tool is, it should spit out some kind of a working definition. Now, this is too long, so what I basically did was copy and paste something like this stick it in here and rewrite it so it makes sense to me. So that's the first step. Next step, let's go back to the plan. Step two, uh, I've said here you've got to memorize the seven. So that's what I'm talking about. This is why I'd create some posters or something, or some mind maps, whatever it might be, so some visuals that help. That, that helps me memorize them. So you need to, is there, is there some way you can, what's the, whatever the best metacognitive techniques you have uh, that work for you, you use these because you need, you need to remember these seven. Step three, the next part, if you'll, if you'll have a look at, uh, let me go back to, let me go back to this one here, concepts. As you see, so we've just covered this first part, but now we're talking about theories and framework. What have the researchers discovered uh, and what are certain models or theories in relation to change? So the first one here is models of technological change. For example, those that explore stages. So basically, all I've done here, so I'm just taking the first theory. Now, what's important here is, if you don't have a lot of time, you don't need to understand absolutely everything. But what you should try and latch onto is some kind of research. There's a, there's a bit of research out there about models of technological change. Do a bit of research, and there's some theories and ideas, then uh, latch onto one that you kind of like and is easy to remember. So in the exam room, you could spit out some of the theories. Now I'll show you. So basically take that, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate, I'll demonstrate. Copy that, put it in. I'm gonna use a different AI tool. Let's use perplexity. I'm gonna say, please explain or identify, I'm gonna use identify theories and research related to that. Okay, what's it say? So models. Okay, so see it's spinning out a few different, some good information there. I take that information, and then what I've done here is, so this is something I prepared earlier. So from my research, I, I so basically I just plugged into perplexity or whatever AI tool that I was using, just ask, asking to explain some of the main like key ideas, key research, key, key frameworks related to uh, 2.1. And it spat out linear model, S-curve model, disruptive innovation theory, actor network theory. Now for exam preparation, I don't need to know all of these. So just find one that you kind of like, yeah, I like that, I can understand that. So uh, the one I chose was the S-curve model. I have no idea what the S-curve model is, so I did some research. I found out what the S-curve model is, and it's about this picture here. And it actually makes perfect sense to me. It's this growth of when there's new technological innovations, there's that slow growth where the research is happening and, and, and things are, are kind of a little bit challenging and diffi difficult to get started. But when the momentum starts to pick up, there's that takeoff period. 
and then there's the maturity phase and then that kind of drops off to the S. So I actually understand that by looking at that diagram and I've also asked, this is what we need to do is to provide real life examples. I actually asked uh, ChatGPT or somebody, some other AI tool, can you give me an example of a, a real life example of an S curve model? And it gave me electronic vehicles. It's like, that makes perfect sense to me. And that I'm now prepared to go to the exam room. So if it actually, the question pops up and says, uh, blah, 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 here's the question. And you need to make a reference to a real world example, which is very common in, in the digital society exams. And you need to uh, make reference to one of the concepts. I can say, oh yes, I'm gonna write about change. Change is, you know, evolution, uh, transformation, this blah, blah, blah. I can also talk about some theories, the S-curve model. And the examiners are gonna read that and go, oh, this student really did do some research. They know about the S-curve model. Oh, and they're actually using the S-curve model to explain EVs or whatever the question is asking. So this is how you demonstrate your depth of knowledge when you're answering the questions. By knowing the concepts, by knowing some of the theories involved and providing some real world examples. So let's recap. So first of all, grasp each concept. There's seven concepts, you need to understand them, have your own definition and understanding of each of the seven. Second, memorize them, the seven, the different seven. So you, if, if the exam, exam asks you for one concept, you've got them. You've got them at your fingertips and you can remember them and you can recall them. Step three, research some theories uh, and also uh, look for some real life examples. Step four, well, step four is identify the real life examples. What I've actually suggested here, so when it comes to step three and four, I basically set up one page. So imagine you've got your one A4 page document. The first half of the page is basically the definitions and the explanation of that specific concept in this example change. The second part are some theories, like what, what are some theories that you could latch on to, uh, popular research or findings, and then in some kind of a real life example, actually, you know what, I'd suggest breaking up the page into threes. So the first third is your definition. Second third is some co common theories and research and findings and models. And then the third part will be your real life example. And then use a certain color. So this helps with the memory as well. So for me, change, I'm gonna use green because I'm thinking of nature and nature changes. Next one I'm gonna use is pink, or next one I'm gonna use is blue. So you've got your, then, you, then you've got your seven documents, different color codes with some images too to help, help with your memory. So you've got access to all seven concepts and you're ready for those eight and 12 mark questions. Now, last step, once you've prepared those seven different kind of uh, cheat sheets, uh, I don't want to call them cheat sheet. I don't, I don't want anyone to think about cheating, but you know what I mean. Um, one page document. You then read tech news. So look at any kind of a tech, tech news and then see if you can actually, so I've written the question here. Identify the digital technology. So this is helping you prepare for the exams. So look at any sort of technology news and I'll show you where to get that news a bit later. Actually, I'll do it right now. So if you look down the bottom of this blog post, I've actually got a bunch of links, which is, which is a great place for sources of information or the current news about technology. In particular, this Twitter feed, this is my Twitter feed. If I'm, I, I read, uh, you know, so I, each day I'm, I'm, I check the news for technology news and particularly with AI, there's loads of technology news, always. Now today, there was something about TikTok and the ban in the US. So any interesting kind of uh, digital society related uh, news article, I'm sh I share in my Twitter feed and I use the hashtag digital society. So if you look at that hashtag digital society, it's a lot of me, a lot of good news articles that are related to digital society. So if you were to take any digital society like this guy here, what's this all about? This article is all about how baseball explains the limits of AI. So read through some kind of an article like this, then go back to this practice question 
and then go back to this pre practice question. First of all, identify the digital t technology. Is the digital technology AI? Is it something to do with the internet? Is it something to do with the media? So this is the content of the three C's. This is the content. So that's the first thing. Identify the digital technology. Second part, discuss the impacts of this technology on various stakeholders. So if it's AI, now which, how does it, so there's the technology. I understand the technology. That's the content. Now how does it actually impact people? Now, don't just think about it impacting one person, but think about the different stakeholders. So uh, AI, so let's talk about AI use at schools. So the different stakeholders are students. Now, how has AI impacted students, positive and negatively? How has AI impacted teachers, positive and negatively? How has it impacted schools as an organization, positively and negatively? So you're looking at the technology and the impacts from a lot of different uh, angles and different perspectives and you're weighing and you're doing a balanced view as well so the next part is then examine it in relation to one of the concepts so let's talk about AI in relation to change and you can even talk about the S curve as well uh, that I've just used that's the example and then uh, connect it to another real life example so if the question is asking about something so you can actually uh, make the connection with another story as well. So just be aware for top marks, if, if the question is asking about technology, but you can also talk about the concept and another real life example that is somehow related, this is where you're gonna be getting high marks because it really demonstrates your depth of knowledge, knowledge and your ability to analyze and evaluate and synthesize information. Now, last point here for a bonus point, see if you can connect it to the context as well. So that's basically how I would prepare for the exam and I'd like to wish you the very best for your examination preparation.